plug in every day. Always charge to 100%. If you don't charge an LFP battery to 100%, it cannot display an accurate range. Not one of these statements is written in your manual or on the website or even true. I get hundreds of comments and questions on my channel and it's obvious many people do not know what to do or believe something to be true when it's actually totally wrong. Here are my top three things you must stop immediately that many people I meet are regularly getting wrong. I'm Dave, welcome to Dave Takes It On. Number one, charging your car every single day. Yeah, before you shout, nowhere have I been able to find in writing anything like this. What has happened is we have misunderstood what is meant. Or think back to your petrol days. Does it make sense? Did you drive 20 miles to work and back, and on the way back pull into your local petrol station and top up with half a gallon? Every time? No, that would be stupid. That's exactly what having a fuel tank prevents you from having to do. A battery is the fuel tank equivalent for an EV. It is there so you can drive for a reasonable distance without having to top it up. And that does not mean reasonable distance is a long journey. It could be several short journeys. Well, a misunderstanding is simple. The guidelines state, and I'm going off Tesla here because I have a Tesla, plug in your battery every night for maximum battery protection. Oh, plain English, if you can plug in at home, you advise that this is the best, me best method. But it does not say or mean you have to plug in your EV every single night. That is very different. What do manufacturers say in their manuals and websites? Well, the main worry is clear. It is stressed so many times running your battery too low into the orange or red or running it totally flat. That does a lot of damage. So they encourage you to plug it in and that's great if you can. But the guidelines also state if you leave your EV at an airport for two weeks, make sure you have enough charge to cover a daily drain of around 1%. In other words, you can quite happily not plug your car in for two weeks or more, and it will come to absolutely no harm. Well, if you can charge at home, plug in as often as you can, or want, or feel like. If you can't charge at home, you do not have to plug it in every day and your battery will be absolutely fine so long as it has a healthy state of charge, i.e. the gauge is not showing orange or red. Now, number two, with LFP batteries, you must always charge to 100%. Well, this is even more misunderstood. Nowhere that I have found does it say you must charge to 100% every single time. Now, the key factor here is what type of battery do you have? And this will be shown in your handbook or on the main display. The manufacturer will include the battery type and the recommended state of charge settings and best charging practices. If you have an NMC battery, as nickel manganese cobalt, which are generally installed on all except the budget models, those instructions or practices will tell you definitely not to charge to 100% every time, even if you have cheap off-peak rate. They state 75-80% to 80 is your target for maximum state of charge setting and 10-20% to 20 is the lowest state of charge for a healthy battery. Plain English, if you have an NMC battery, do not ever charge it to 100% and do not ever run it flat. That's why all the advertised charging times quote figures like 20% to 80% takes 25 minutes, or it can add 100 miles in 18 minutes. Everything you read states do not allow it to drop to 0% and do not charge it to 100%. For normally, normal daily use, keep the state of charge between 20 and 80%, and the car will be perfectly happy. Now, if you only do a short commute each day, say 10 to 20 miles, and you can charge every day, either at home or a public charger, your ideal stated charge is around 50%, with the batteries not under any stress at all. See, when fully charged, it's a bit like a balloon. If it's absolutely full, it's dying to relieve that pressure. That's not good for it. Now, the confusion arises mainly because LFP batteries are totally the opposite. But again, what has been stated has been seriously misunderstood. LFP batteries can be charged to 100% and can be discharged down to nearly 0% with far less harm. 
But many people I speak to and hear from in the comments section have taken this to mean that every single time you charge your LFP EV, you must take it to 100%, full stop. What is written does not say that at all. Also, many people have totally misunderstood, telling me that if you don't charge to 100% each time, the battery cannot calibrate itself and it cannot report an accurate range. Again, this is never stated anywhere. What it does say is that when you charge to 100%, the state of charge recalibrates to be more accurate. That's word for word. It does not say it'll be totally useless if you don't. Now, does anyone out there absolutely rely on the displayed range down to the last mile? No, that would be silly. If the range is slightly off because you haven't charged it to 100% recently, it is almost certainly close enough it doesn't matter. But then, of course, you have to read all the technical information on EV batteries and the chemistry and everything else. And to generalise, they all state categorically that if you always charge to 100% and always run it down to 0%, your battery will have a shorter lifespan than if you charge from 20% and up to only 70%. That applies to LFP. Yeah, even LFP. Now, the fact is, an LFP will last longer than an NMC if you regularly charge it to 100% and down to 0%, but both types of battery will have a longer lifespan if you don't. Once again, common sense applies. If you can charge at home, setting the charge limit to 100% with LFP will do little harm. But if you can't charge at home, this does not mean you have to go and find a charger when you get back every single day. And it does not mean you have to charge it to 100% every single day. Remember about leaving your EV at the airport. It is in the manual, in a Tesla. See, that always also applies to LFP. They will come to no harm at all, parked up for several days or weeks, as long as the state of charge does not drop below 20%. I found this out on a trip recently to Menorca. I went there for two weeks, left my Model S for two weeks at Manchester Airport, stated of charge when I got there was 75%, got back, found it was either 61 or 63, I can't remember, but it was in the 60s. Absolutely fine. No harm whatsoever. The manual says I can do that. So, special note now for EV owners who cannot charge at home. If your EV has a range of 200 miles or more, then after a typical week of 140 miles, your state of charge will only be down to somewhere between 10 and 20%, maybe more, and it'll be ready for a charge. To charge at a rapid or ultra-rapid charger from 10% up to 80% will take less than 30 minutes in most cars, no more than 45 minutes in others. That's your spring. It's probably got the world's smallest battery and the slowest charging speed. And that one advertises only 38 minutes to go from 19 kilometres to 135 kilometres. It's about 100 miles. So with one of those, if you're doing 140 a week, you'll probably have to every other week charge twice. But the Vauxhall Astra, for example, the Astra E, that advertises it can go from 19 to 153 miles, nearly enough for 140 mile difference, in 26 minutes. 140 mile weekly use replaced in 26 minutes. Tesla Model 3 shows you can replace it in 170, uh, you can replace 175 miles in 15 minutes. So 140 miles, you'll get about 10 or 12 minutes. Let's put two and two together for those who cannot charge at home. You do not need to charge every day. Just don't let the state of charge drop below 20%, even if you have an LFP battery. When you do charge, you should never charge 100% on an NMC battery and only need to sometimes charge to 100% with an LFP. Number three, do not charge even an LFP to 100%. Once again, there's a huge misunderstanding. If you're on a road trip, all the manuals will tell you, Tesla tells me, the fastest way to charge is to charge little and often and also to only charge enough to reach your destination with 10 to 20% left. If I program in a destination into my Tesla, it will always get me to my destination, with no matter how many stops along the way, with 10 to 20% left when I get there. This is the optimum. 
Okay. Well, first, only charge back up to 75 or 80%. Why is that? Well, think Formula One. In many races, an extra pit stop gives a quicker race time. That's why they sometimes do two, three or four stops. It's quicker. With an EV, this is because of the charging curve. No matter what EV you have, even a Porsche Taycan, they all charge really quickly when down at 10 or 20% state of charge and really slowly from 80 to 100%. In most cases, it will actually be quicker to go from 10 to 80% than to go from 80% to 100%. So on a long road trip where you already know you're going to have multiple stops needed just for charging, your total journey time will be much shorter if you stop one or two times more but charge to only 70% each time. Oh, I launched a full video on that a few months ago with actual figures and examples. It probably needs updating, so I'll have a look at that. Oh, by the way, if you like this video and want to see more, please click subscribe, click the notification bell. Well, why plan to arrive at your destination with only 10 to 20% state of charge? Well, I personally hate waiting for my car to charge and I never do it. Yeah, you heard me. I never wait for my car to charge. Let me explain my normal practice. If I'm on a road trip, I will normally be starting with about an 80% state of charge. Yeah, that's it. I do not charge up to 100% for a long road trip. I personally cannot drive four or five hours without a stop. Two to three hours is normally enough for me, and we're told by everyone to take breaks regularly, don't drive tired. So when I need to stop for a quick break, this is for me, not the car, toilet visit, coffee, donut, stretch my leg and my aching back. I'll always plug it in. I leave the state of charge set to 80%. I do what I need and then I set off no matter what the state of charge is when I am ready. Now that may be 80% but it could be 62% or 71%. It really doesn't matter. Each quick break is dealt with for looking after me and I get in whatever charging I can squeeze in within, within that time. Now, if I'm stopping for a longer break, say lunch, then I might reset the state of charge to 90%, but that would be rare. I've never set it to 100%, that's just me. So when I finish my lunch, I set off again, no matter what the state of charge, but because lunch takes a bit longer, it will probably be a higher state of charge. But I don't need anything above 80%. Well, I always aim to get to my destination with 10 or 20% state of charge remaining, and this is simply because I treat the journey as something I want to be over and done with as quickly as possible. I refuse to allow my car to dictate how long I spend at each stop on the journey. In virtually all cases, my destination will have some form of EV charging. It could be public, destination or home. Once I arrive, I sort out the charging. But again, I'll never wait for my car. So if I arrive, it's early evening, I'm hungry, need a meal, I will go to a nearby restaurant, I'll plug it in uh, and charge it while I'm eating my meal. Whatever the state of charge when I finish, be that 60 or 80, that's fine for me. I then head off to the hotel or wherever I'm staying. If I'm on my way home and I need to charge en route, I will only ever put in the absolute minimum to get me there, when I can use my off-peak home charging rate. Why would I pay retail rates at superchargers when I can pay off-peak rates when I get home? So this will often result in me having to stop, maybe for a toilet break, and I will literally plug the car in, go to the toilet, won't even pick up a coffee, go back out to the car less than five minutes, and I'll head off. And that is often enough just to be able to get me home. So if your charging costs are the same, whether they're on your journey or at your destination, in other words, let's say you're going to use a public ultra rapid charger, then getting there with a low state of charge will give you a faster journey for the same price. If your destination has cheaper or free charging, getting there with as little state of charge as you can will make a faster journey and reduce the cost. Well, I hope this helps. I also hope, hope this stops some of the drivers I meet regularly who are sitting around for 20 or 30 minutes longer than they needed to while they watch patiently bored out of their minds as the state of charge creeps up to 100% at a rate of about 5 or 10 kilowatts. 
Stop it. I'm Dave. Well, thanks very much for watching. If you have enjoyed this video, please click the like button. And if you'd like to see more, please subscribe and click the notification bell so we can notify you next time we launch a video. And a massive thank you to all our Patreon supporters. It is your support that enables us to go out and make these videos for you. So thank you very much for your contribution. I'm Dave.